Good morning, good morning. I'm your host, Hassan Aline. Co-host, Kyle Williams. And guest, Dee Dee. Special guest, Dee Dee. <laughs> yes. In a part of Michigan. It's hot. Well, it's nice out here. It ain't that hot. Yeah, it's Michigan. been hot. And we're going to keep it hot. We're going to keep it hot up in uh, here. That's mm. right. That's right. And since our uh, uh, buddy and friend, President Trump, wants to bomb everybody, hmm. bomb Korea and go through that Twitter thing. And, uh, you know, now they're talking about the president. What's his name? Ying Young. He got to do something. Uh, if they don't, and he act like he's scared of Trump, they'll kill him. His generals will have him assassinated. You know, this is the real world. But here's something that's very interesting, and nobody's talking about this dealing with that uh, bomb. And Einstein, you know, Einstein cannot be reasonably held responsible for creating a nuclear age because they were many brilliant non-Jewish minds working along the same line. The secret, the secret of the explosive atomic fission would have been discovered sooner or later anyway, and probably within a few years. Indeed, I ain't got long. Da, da, da. Indeed, Enrico Fermi and Neil Borrell knew that a fission bomb was possible, just as Einstein did in 1939. But it is interesting, and only when Hitler de be began to threaten Jews did Einstein add his catch to the prestige and prestige to the project, develop a workable bomb. When folks are threatened, then they kind of got up off their death, huh? Now, that's what the Jewish people did while we sit around. We're threatened, but we just sit there and cry. Mm -hmm. yeah. The stated reason was the fear that Nazi Germany might, might develop an atomic bomb first and thus win the war, and that had uh, the war that had already begun in Europe. It's interesting, and we know about the war. Germany invaded Poland on September 1st, 1939. America did not enter until two long, ye <laughs> two long years later. I guess if you're fighting and somebody comes to your aid two years later, that's a long time. You're being beaten down, bombed half to death. And uh, that was in December 7th, 1941, allowing... British, Britain, Russia, Canada, and Australia, New Zealand to bear the blunt of the Nazi onslaught. In retrospect, it seemed unlikely it was impossible that the Germans would ever develop even one atomic bomb during World War II. Now, how does this guy say that? The Germans, <laughs> <laughs> the Germans weren't capable of developing a, a bomb, but we know Germans had some bad scientists. That's right. Bad engineers, meaning great engineers and scientists. The reason was not expertise, which German had in abundance, but electricity. Isn't that something? Hmm. Go to show you, we don't know nothing about no bomb. The Manhattan Project demonstrated that to obtain fissionable, fissionable Ukra uranium, I started to say Ukraine. Yeah. <laughs> they talk about it so much. <laughs> fissionable uranium-235 or plutonium in sufficient qualities to achieve critical mass for a bomb, truly immense amounts of electrical power were required to separate the fissionable element from the non-fissionable ores. So they didn't have the water. <laughs> they did not have the water, plain and simple. Germans did not have the water. And then it says here, the British, who had done much valuable preliminary work on the development of a practical atomic bomb handed over to the Manhattan Project had long since calculated that their own hydroelectrical resources were totally insufficient to produce enough physical material to make an atomic bomb. That was England. They also knew that Germany's hydroelectric resources were likewise insufficient to perform such a task. Only America's Tennessee Valley Authority, the TVA. All that water. <laughs> huh? Yeah, they can do it. Isn't that enough? Isn't that something? Only the TVA had enough hydroelectric surplus. In Eurasia, only huge Russian rivers like the 
Dipner and Novova could provide sufficient electrical power to make material for an atomic bomb, and then it got in quotes, which they did, or in parentheses. So they had the water. And this explains the Anglo-American aid to Soviet Russia during 1942-43 as a desperate measure to keep the Nazis from defeating the Red Army and taking control of these rivers. Wow. You know, we, I've heard... So if they had gotten control of those rivers and that water, they would have been able to... Yeah, make, make your bomb. Bomb. They would have been <laughs> able to make your bomb. Be Everybody be saying hi, Hitler. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we never heard that. No, no, uh, no. You know, I, I mean, I don't study World War II, but we've seen enough movies about it. They got enough of these dramas always talking about World War II and what happened. Y you know. What's the difference between an, uh, the uh, nuclear bomb and the hydrogen bombs? Well, that's a good question for a non-nuclear mm -hmm. scientist <laughs> like myself. <laughs> 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 One of them is... More explosive. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. One of them will burn you alive. It will incinerate <laughs> the atmosphere. It's, at the, it's, it's the atmosphere. The air we breathe on fire. Mm -hmm. That's what that atomic bomb does. Now, I really don't know the, the, the difference, but I guess if you shot by 38 or 45, it doesn't make a difference, do it? Nope. You're still dead. <laughs> You're still dead. <laughs> dead is dead. Dead is dead. It, it don't make any difference. But here's an interesting thing here. Let me get down to the good part. I guess you said, wow, that's the good part. But the fact remains that in 1939, it was known that the Germans could not produce an atomic bomb within its own resources. And the fact remains that when the United States did finally make a workable atomic bomb in 1945, they dropped not on the Germans, but on Japan. Hmm. What? Yeah. Oh, yeah, they do. Do they say what? The weapons were tested as it were on a non Caucasian, he says Caucasoid, and certainly non Jewish population when, in the first place, the race to the atomic bomb had begun to stop Nazi Germany from getting it first, however <laughs> unlikely, and only because Hitler had begun his campaign of extermination against the Jews. Well, now. <laughs> Why did they drop him on here? We need to ask Mr. Trump, President Trump, since he's trying to drop this bomb. He wants to. He's biting it. He can't wait to drop the bomb on the Koreans. But this is a fact of, this is a fact, a historical fact. I mean, these people in Korea are living witnesses to what they did in Japan. And they were fighting during that war, or after they dropped the bomb, the Koreans fought. America had not signed a peace treaty. They were in the armistice like a stalemate, uh, like let's talk about it. So they have never stopped fighting a war officially. No official into it. They just say, well, you know what, let's, let's think about it. Let's rearm. Let's, let's cool down, and let's figure out what we're going to do. And so now America, with these crazy folks that we have leading the countries, says, well, let's just jump on them. But how are you going to tell the Koreans that they're not for real about dropping the bomb on them? They dropped the bomb on their cousins, the Japanese. You know, all those people are the same. The Vietnamese, the Chinese, the Koreans, they are cousins. Ain't nobody be playing with it, I tell you that. Huh? Ain't nobody be playing with it, take lightly. Oh, yeah, but they know what America has done and will do. Look at Gaddafi. Well, Gaddafi gave up his atomic mom research. Hmm. And uh, Saddam Hussein gave up his atomic mom See research. See where they are. And America ran over them. You know, America doesn't run over people to have atomic bombs. They tiptoe around China. <laughs> they tiptoe Iran. <clears throat> we don't even know if Iran has atomic bomb. We know they were working on it, and they've been tiptoeing around Iran. Yes. So they <laughs> might have something. But they don't mess with Pakistan. Why? Because they have an atomic bomb. India has atomic bomb. So we're talking about... Uh, 
the non-Caucasian race of people, the whites, the non-white group with the bombs. This m morning, Trump did a Twitter tweet, whatever it is, uh -huh. saying that Iran was working with North Korea. What difference do it make? It was a lie. They said it was a lie. Yeah, well, they're going to say it's a lie. We don't know who they're working with. We don't know who they're working with, but, the, you know, they have a bomb out here. They have dropped a bomb, and they're not like us. You know, you say, what do you mean they're not like us? What do we got to do with them? Well, these same people shoot us down every day, and we say we got to pray for them. There's something wrong with them. There's something mm -hmm. wrong with something us. There's something wrong with us, us. <laughs> that we don't know. I, I mean, look at, look, at, look at the difference. <laughs> when... When George Bush II went into Iraq, and ladies and gentlemen, this book that I'm reading from is called Chosen People from the Caucasus by Michael Bradley. You know, he got some interesting stuff in there. Mm -hmm. I, wasn't, I wasn't looking for that in there, but it was in there. And I thought I'd bring it out here to everybody's attention, what's going on. But the thing started when George Bush II went into Iraq, and in the process, why do we go into Iraq? He said, well, Iraq, Iran, and North Korea were the axes of evil. <laughs> and and, and uh, the man's father, Kim Jong-soo's father, says, wait a minute. We, we, didn't, we didn't bomb the World Trade Center? We don't have anything to do with that. Right. We don't have we don't harbor these terrorists over here. We don't have anything to do with that. And you lumping us in there? You didn't jumped on them, so we next. Hey, the man stole those. They had UN inspectors in there. They already had worked out a deal. He told them, get out. He when when George Bush made that speech. He told the U.N. inspectors to get out. They left that night or the next day. <laughs> he sent the army in there. He put them all out. And guess what else he said? Turn on them blankety-blank centrifuges. Start up the nuclear reactors. Mm -hmm. We need some bomb. They're not. They're, did you see what they did to Korea? <laughs> I mean, the Gaddafi, uh, not <laughs> Gaddafi in Libya. That other guy, uh, 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 Hussein, 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 Hussein in, in Iraq, the man says, We are not playing with these folks. And they went in on a fast track to developing that bomb. Mm -hmm. So we got our heads in the sand. And, and another thing, since we're talking on the difference, you know, they have a, uh, a lady, a woman that's president of uh, the Baptist, uh, what is they, what they, what's the name of that group? The, the, ba the Baptist Preachers, Preachers uh, Council. Yeah, Baptist Preachers a a Council. Council of Baptist Preachers. Preachers yeah. So Reverend Talis is not there anymore. I guess they have, a, you know, they pick somebody every couple of years if the term is up, if they don't want to have a, the person continue. Hmm. But They hiding behind this woman now. And you may say, wait a minute, what are you talking about? I said it, and I'm going to say it again. They hiding behind a skirt. <laughs> all those men over there, all them preachers, now that it got tough, <laughs> now that they got to stand up and fight and look down, uh, not Donald Trump, but Donald Trump's wannabe, Mike My Duggan, <laughs> in the face, they got to stand up to Mike Duggan. They hide. They say, oh, come on, honey. It's time for a woman. It's time for a woman to be head of the Baptist pastors. We want you to speak for us. They ran and hid. Yeah, because mm -hmm. Talis, uh, for a minute there, he was uh, being kind of vocal. And I sent him a couple of things, and he kind of responded. talking to the mic. Talking to I the sent mic. him a couple of documents, and he kind of responded, and now all of a sudden he's not there. But what do they always say about the water when people get up there and complain about it? Well, you know you got to pay your bills. You you know it's the law. They don't they always tell us about the law. 
Well, they, they shutting they off. They don't never file it. Huh, where the they problem. law? Did they giving you a illegal bill, an illegal drainage fee? Where's that at? Well, how come they don't follow the law with these illegal drainage fees? Huh? It's voluntary. That's what the Michigan Supreme Court said, don't it? Yeah. Bolt versus the city of Lansing says it's illegal. It's a drainage fee. It's voluntary. Let's write the man a letter and say, take me out of it, a great white man. Take yeah. me out of it, master. And show, show, show me the, the policy, not the policy, but the ordinance of the statutes. They even said that there is a drainage. There look is at the, no the law. Timing. I know look at the timing. Look at the timing. Look at the timing on that drainage fee right before the election. Well, in 2016, so they can haul that and dangle that over these preachers' heads. Okay. Now, half of those churches will be closed because of this drainage fee. It's another way of closing down the church. The church is a political base. The church is the black folks' political base. That's yes. what they organized in the South when the voting rights came about. Even when Martin Luther King came to speak in the North, he came to speak at black churches. That's right. He went out at Wayne State speaking. They didn't let him speak at Eastern Michigan University. We spoke that black church has always been central to black society. And so they say, well, you don't need a church. Well, see, we, we, we are missing the whole point. We're not looking at the big picture. The major two forces that people had was the union and the churches. They already got the union cutting their pensions and doing everything else illegal. They didn't cut their power that they had, so they're not politically uh, organized like they usually be. And the next, now they're coming after the churches. So what did that leave us with? Nothing. 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 But why are the black preachers and ministers hiding behind this woman? I don't understand it. Because uh, they ain't never did nothing in no the way. first place. No. And I'm not saying the Very women the women aren't qualified. I'm not saying that. Thank you. Pay close attention. I'm not saying that. They should be supporting her. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe it's time. Well, but then they have nothing. a woman, huh? <laughs> they ain't doing nothing, so maybe she She'll put a little fire up on her. Because look at Flint. Until the woman got in there, nothing happened. They were scared right. to say something about their being poisoned. They were said, scared to say, the black men in Flint were scared to say, we're going to sue the state. That's she threatened right. to sue them. She put the notice in. At first, you got to give them a notice that, or, that they're yeah, going to be sued. Intent to sue. A notice of intent to sue the state of Michigan. And then they start changing. She got more money. More services are being put in, even though they're hollering. Even though they're jumping up and down about it. And, you know, you may say, what do you mean the people up there were scared and they know about it? You know, Carl and Didi, we read right here at the station back then, about a year ago, but we got short memory. We read off a list of different appointments that they had uh, the governor and his people had at the Rotary Club, wrote the dates down, they went to the Rotary Club, the Guyana's Club, they went to all kind of clubs, the Beaver Club, all kind mm -hmm. of things they had in Flint to try to get this deal on the Kerry Gandhi water. So they knew they wanted it for money. They didn't care nothing about them people being poisoned and the man say he didn't know nothing about it. <laughs> huh? He didn't know nothing about it, but they also reported that he told the preachers take the, 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 the he was going to get them by award, but don't tell nobody. Now, right? that was the filters. The filters, the filters. Yeah, that's right. right. They don't tell right. nobody. We right. get the filters. So maybe it's time for a woman that's going to stand up. And be transparent. And when they did the same thing to uh, State Representative Sherry Gay Dagno, go no, put her yeah. in charge and say, hey, we're going to put you in charge of this committee for the school. Uh, we're going to make you the spokesman for the black uh, legislatures. Because they weren't saying a word. Then, then Brian Banks hid behind her. You know, and look at how they do these guys. Well, they went through Brian, Brian Banks' record and said, well, we're going to lock you up 
because you committed fraud 10 years ago or six years ago, and he wouldn't even fight it. Okay, I'll step down, even though statute of limitations had run his court. We say it right here, you know. Oh, the, uh, <laughs> well, he didn't know, man, but you Well, right. maybe he know. We said it, but they did what he wanted to do, chicken little. That's <laughs> all that is. <laughs> you know, uh, Duggan's going up to Lansing today. Well, that's all the game. He's going up there. D insurance. Yeah, yeah, that's all the game. Well, so what? All they trying to do? They're not going to lower the premium rates. They're not going to lower your rates. They want to cut out the amount of benefits you're going to receive if you're in an accident. They want to limit it, like they have always limited things for us. Oh, we got short memories. Look, look at the war. Look at World War Two. When our fathers and grandfathers fought in World War Two and they came home. And you said, well, we grew up in the project. Well, I thought your father was a veteran. Yeah, but they didn't tell him about the, uh, VA that he loans. could get the VA loans. Mm -hmm. He could get a loan. They didn't tell him about he could go to school on a GI Bill. Not only was it going to school, but they gave a check. was a component of that. They gave him a check every month. Wow, did you know that? Come on now, they don't treat us fair. And not, you know, and, and all this stuff Trump talking about with his crazy self or not so crazy. But we the ones crazy because we won't call them out on it. No, you don't say nothing. I'm li I listen to different people on the radio stations, all on the news. They don't say a word. They don't mm -hmm. never say Trump never was in the military. Trump was a draft drive, dodger. dodger. His, his father had millions of dollars back then. How do you think he got out? President Bill Clinton never was in the war. He <laughs> didn't, we were in the Vietnam War. Governor Snyder, Snyder. <laughs> was never in the war. What are you talking about draft dodgers, how they love the flag? They ain't fighting for war. nothing. <laughs> they sure ain't going to put they self online. You know, it's like... Um, all the way back in England, they got somebody to fight for them. The, the barons didn't go to war. All these old fake movies you be watching about <laughs> the, the gladiators right, and all right, these folks right. talking the about the round yeah, table. My went lord, to fight we for are them. fighting for you, yeah. my mm -hmm. lord, and all that. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. You're right. They got all the little young men, the young boys over there that was working under him as vassals and serfs. Serfs mean slaves, slav is slave since you don't know what it means. Got all them folk, got all them white boys, and sent them off to war. He ain't went and fought nowhere. They show you all these pictures where the king and the prince is training. Training to do what? <laughs> cut his wife's throat? <laughs> and he training to cut his wife's throat. That's about all. Ain't that what King Henry did? The ape? Ape, yeah. Uh, killed a couple of them, locked a couple of them up. I guess like in the Shakespeare. Propaganda. Huh? It's propaganda. But but the slave owners during the Civil War, they didn't get out there and fight. They sent the slaves to fight in their place. And one of them white boys on their plantation. Isn't that something? So they got us talking about it all wrong. And all these folks walking around here. Governor, uh, what's the other guy? England. Aunt England used a, tw a Twinkie defense. He was too fat. <laughs> too chubby back then. He was a pound or two overweight. And everybody knows after all that calisthenics and running their mouths, he'd have lost that weight. He'd have lost about 50 pounds. So these guys that get to be governor have never fought, have never done anything for America. And they waving the flag. The, the, you know, you just sit there and listen to these people talk like they crazy. And you don't hear the newscaster say, well, Trump never been in the military. No, no, they ain't going to point President that out. President Trump never. No. What, what about them? What mm -hmm. I, it's fake. Now, ain't it? we can say they fake, fake. and phony. And phony yeah. What about them blacks that get on television, national television, and don't open their mouth and say, well, Trump never been in the military. What was his jab strat uh, strategy? And look at George Bush. He tried to. I'm not talking about his father because we know the old man. We know Daddy Bush was in the military. And we know he still likes to jump out of Planes in a parachute, <laughs> saying he still got it. Now his son, he got in the National Guard, so he wouldn't have to go. 
You know, if you went to the National Guard, you didn't have to go to Vietnam. Yeah, a whole that, lot of them uh, was doing that. Yeah. whole lot of them. All the, a whole lot of white boys went in there. So he got a pass to say, well, I was military. You didn't go over there in the big theater. You didn't leave America. He didn't leave Texas. <laughs> he didn't leave Texas. All them people to go out and fight somewhere, killing them. And then now, now they got the women. Now they say, well, we're equal. Yes. And you can take a bullet too. They oh, equally yeah. want to get you killed. Put them on the front line. Put them in combat. And they just jumping up and down. I don't think they're really jumping up and down. All them women I've seen coming back with the limbs and legs mm-hmm. cut out. Mm-mm. One leg, two legs, and they running for Congress. And, and some of them got elected. You know, and some of them rich used to pay people to go fight for them. Well, that's what they did. If you had money, they didn't go out there. But they don't never talk about that. For what? Never what? talk because about that. Never the, tell you look, the truth. The, the veterans don't get anything for that sweat Mm-mm. and blood that they gave Mm-mm. for coming back half crazy. They don't get anything. They don't get the proper treatment at the no, VA. They don't no. get the medicine. They just have them wait around. They don't have the, the houses. Don't have the, the majority. Don't have a job. The majority of the homeless folks that you see out here begging and running around crazy are Vietnam vets that they don't even want to take care of. These are some fake, phony, ridiculous people that's always talking about the flag. I wonder did Nolan Finley go? You know, oh. y'all don't, they don't never check out their status, Mm-mm. huh? What happened to the middle class? What middle class? Well, they're in, in the middle. No, right, they're still in the middle. Right, right, right. I've never understood that term. <laughs> I, I never understood that term, the middle. So the middle class, and I, you know, if you make seventeen, fifteen thousand dollars, you in the middle class, and I'm like, what are you talking about? Let me see. Are you in the middle of the road? So, so you got the rich people on one end, mm-hmm. and the poor folks on the other. And if you're not poor, you get a paycheck. They don't consider you poor, but you one <laughs> one paycheck. You one paycheck away from being poor. poor. Let them get that Bankruptcy. paycheck out. Yes. <laughs> so anyway, that's the middle class. Mm-hmm. And it's like you, if you're in a vice, and that's what the middle class is not in a vice, and they turning the screws on you. Oh yeah. They squeezing the middle class now. Somebody can't get no turn up, no what out of a rock. Well, they're going to get some blood mm-hmm. out of that middle class. They ain't thinking about you. These white folks, these rich, rich people ain't thinking about mm-hmm. you. I'm showing you that every hey, day. You know what, Carl? Let me see that constitution. I'm going to let y'all talk after I get off my little soapbox here on that 20. You know, people, you know, they tell us all kind of lies. And I guess maybe you could say inadvertently because they tell us, well, you know, the droid can't do such and such a thing. Or the, they're creatures of the state. They're creatures of the they state. We didn't heard that, that lie life. forever. They never finished the whole thing. And they left off creatures one of word. State constitution. Oops. Creatures of the state constitution. So when we pick up this little book here, this little pamphlet, and say, look at what the pamphlet says, uh, y'all just messed up. But well, that ain't why. Uh, that ain't what boss said. Man, why don't you go back down south? What what is you talking about what boss man said? You can take the country, you can take them black folk, them Negroes out the country, but you can't take the country out of them. Ain't that what we heard? Yeah, that's a fact. And they still walking around here talking about what he said. Well, uh, 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 Governor England said, that this is Article 7, Section 17. We have, I'm reading this because it come up the other week, and I guess it's going to keep coming up. Tyrone brought it up, which I'm, th- I'm glad he did because we read it from time to time. Charters, resolutions, ordinance, and numeration of power. And that's a big word in there, numeration, huh? Mm-hmm. They got it outlined what it is. They're numbering your powers, huh? Under general law, the electorate of each city and village shall have the power and authority to frame adopt and amend its charter and to amend an existing charter of the city or village heretofore, 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 granted or enacted by the legislature.
for the government of the city or village. The legislature gave the city of Detroit, Grand Rapids, Roseville, their charters in the past. That's right, the legislature. This new charter, well, they, they, they changed it in 1908, the Constitution, yeah. but it's been in here since 1908, and it allows for the city and the villages and the counties, all municipal governments, to form or frame their own charter without the state legislature and governor, governor telling them what to do. Now, they can pass laws as long as they don't conflict with their charter. And as long as your charter, the city charter, don't conflict with the Constitution. Now, why do we don't understand that? Nobody's talked about it. But and it don't say governor in this section, period. Do you, do you see the word governor in there, D.D.? No, it ain't in there. Uh, they got a, a, a different <laughs> section. <laughs> they got that's a section different 22. section for the governor. How come Snyder doesn't have to no, uh, adhere to that, like with the Constitution, like with our pensions? and, 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 and Because he's a crook. <laughs> and nobody The man's a gangster. To. You don't see him being indicted and putting on trial, mm -hmm. do you? Look, they talking about putting Hillary Clinton in jail because she took some emails off a server, which was a, which is a nice word for computer, government computer, and put them on her own private computer. That's all. Now the Trump kids doing the, the same, same thing. thing. Yeah. How dumb can you be? <laughs> 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 Woo! But now it says here, each such city and village shall have the power to adopt resolution and ordinance relating to its municipal concern, property, and government, subject to the Constitution and law. It says subject to the Constitution, not subject to boss, gangster, Snyder. And you know, he's still the governor. Mm -hmm. Don't say nothing in this section about the governor. And he's been getting away, been given the pass, because all the things that have happened in Michigan is because of Snyder's policy, starting with the bankruptcy. Not only the bankruptcy, the fiasco that happened in France, that was because of Snyder's policy. But they won't say that, and this Attorney General, Shooty, is really protecting him because what they did, they, they did a bait and switch. They got all these appointees, and he prosecuted them, but not one elected official. You never heard him say that this was because Snyder's policy. Because if he would have, and they had it been phrasing the uh, actions like that, he would be on his way out the door. Well, he'd have been in jail by now. He should have been. You know, look at that guy, the farmer's. There was uh, a supervisor over there on the East Coast, was it Massachusetts or New York, and the people had uh, died from the uh, pills that they got. Okay. And he was supervisor. Mm. He's being indicted. He got to stay in trial. That's right. So now all of a sudden he act like, well, this man, the poor, poor baby, he, uh, uh, what was the name, Lions, Loans, or whatever it is? I think Lions. Lions. Lions, I think. Uh, anyway. He didn't know. He was just a supervisor. He was just head of the department. Yeah, he knew. He knew just like Snyder knew about it. That's why Snyder wanted the water. He wanted to carry a guy in the water. But they saving the city of Detroit money. They ain't saving the city of Detroit nothing. nothing. When the water is being cut off in the city of Detroit, Governor Snyder ordered these cutoffs. That's right. Governor Snyder ordered the drainage fees. I mean, y'all don't know that. Y'all don't know how, how crazy are you? Oh, you got short memories. I know you're not crazy. Oh, right, forgive me. Forgive me for that. That's Governor Snyder, all them, uh, human has, in, in Governor Snyder, Gary, in Gary Brown, doesn't he work for Snyder? Yeah. When he put in there, wasn't Chief Craig put in there? Oh, oh you say, well, no, Governor, how come he didn't? He appointed the emergency manager. Through Kevin Orr. That's right. Through Kevin Orr. 
Kevin Orr had a contract with the governor. That's right. He had nothing with the city of Detroit. Yeah, we repeated that on the show. I don't know how many times. And it was in the court record. He got a key work for the. He had a signed contract with Governor Snyder. Early has a contract with Governor Snyder. What early? I didn't say early one morning. I said <laughs> early the one up in Flint. Look like you would know his name. I got to tell you first name, last name, middle name. Hmm. The guy that said he switched the water and put Flint on the poison water with all the lead in it. It ain't even, how come he not being indicted now? Don't just think they saving the governor's people so they don't have to ask the question, well, what did the governor know? Or would you ever tell the governor? The man, man oh, that black guy? Man, you know, he going to. Why do they take a long time to indict, like, Snyder and Duggan, but when it comes to, like, Brian Banks or Kwame or. Um, they going to fast I mean, forward, don't they? I mean. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, it takes them years. Uh, oh, they've got a grand jury. They're impaneling a grand jury. Oh, okay. A year later. Uh, well, let's take some calls. Thank you. Caller, you on the air. Thanks for waiting. Caller, caller, you on the air. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I know y'all miss me. Oh, yeah. The yeah. watchman. You know, I just wanted to tell y'all that Donald Trump, y'all president, he tricked y'all again, and I tell you why, because he got y'all focused on the left, which is this stupid bomb with Korea. He ain't about to mess with Korea. Korea ain't no joke. Korea, wait, did y'all hear what that guy said? He waiting. You know, it's just a distraction. You know, but I think what we should be talking about, like you mentioned, his son with that email and that Mullet investigation. You need to be talking about him himself being under investigation. The White House. That's what we should be talking about. But he got everybody so tricked with this war stuff. Everybody focused on that. See, he know what he's doing. They know what they're doing. They want to pull out the uh, NFL. But it's a distraction. It's all a distraction. I want to hear and, and, and focus on this investigation. You know, with this Russia corruption, and you, and you, and if you think about it, you, you're rarely hearing about it because everybody's focused on the left. When it's just a distraction, as the watchman, I tell everybody, hey, as Farrakhan said, we need to come back to the right and 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 focus on the picture, which is his corrupt, dirty son, and everybody in his circle. You know, forget that war. He, he ain't stupid. He's not stupid in North Korea. They not nerfed. They not worried. We don't know what they got. You know, we don't know what they got. He talking about, oh, we going to uh, 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 take them out, take them off the uh, map. Period. That's just rhetoric, far as I'm concerned. That's a distraction. He's trying to scare the Americans. That's how I look at it. He's trying to scare the Americans, but. That's my comment. I think we should focus on that investigation. That's what I want to hear. I want to hear this mullet, breaking news, mullet. All right. You know. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Oh. Okay, what do you think about that, Didi? Well, whenever he does something crazy, just like the caller said, talking about the flag, you look and see what's really going on. Uh, the last time, uh, what was it, Charlottesville, when he started that, Right, right. Okay, what was really going on with uh, his son having to testify before Congress? True. Okay, so you always, when he goes out there, they take him out there, and he'll do something what we'll think is crazy. But you, like you said, you've got to really look to your right hand and your left hand. You've got to see what's really going on. That's what you have to watch it's for. A diversion. Yes, a diversion. Diversion tactic. tactic. It's a diversion oh, tactic, God. but mm. war... America has a war economy. This country has run on wars. And we cannot take our eyes off of the rumors of war, which we've heard about all the time, and the fact that George Bush 
ran into Iraq, bombed them back into the Middle Ages, take, took the oil, they're still fighting in Afghanistan, and this man got to make some money. Hmm. Donald Trump is there, it don't matter to make some money. Now, the investigation with Mueller has taken one heck of a turn. I need to say it like it is, one hell of a turn. They come to a stop, a standstill. Yeah. Because Donald Trump said it. He says, well, I'm the president. I'm still the pre I'm the president. Mm -hmm. Am I not? Wow, well, as president, I can pardon anybody, anybody I want. I think I might be able to pardon myself. Mm -hmm. Now, when he said that, it don't matter what kind of investigation this kid's going on, if they indicted or whatever, if they go to, if they said you're guilty of X, Y, and Z, he is going to do what? Give him a pardon. And that's very clear. He, he um, pardoned that mm -hmm. sheriff out in Arizona. What does the pardon mean? you free and clear, just like you have never, ever been, you know, that they just tear that piece of paper up to say, yeah. to say, to say that you're guilty of a crime. That's thrown out. And, you know, we got to look at the facts. The facts are the man can pardon anybody, and there's nothing they can do. So what has Mueller done? Mueller has had to get with the New York State attorney and they say well we're going to have to convict him and his people under some state law because the president can't pardon state crimes he can only pardon federal, federal crimes, crimes. Right. and nobody's talking about that anymore yeah. they said it once or twice and they're very quiet and i said it before uh you don't get a billion dollars and you a real fool you can act foolish you can act like a clown, and you can do what you want to do. I remember when people were saying, well, Michael Jackson is gay. And, and what, what did the old folks say? Don't that boy have that money? Don't, isn't he a billionaire? Hmm. Well, I don't, you know what? I don't care what he is. He got the money, don't he? <laughs> and, they, and he said he go anywhere he want to go hmm. because he got that money. That's what people want. So Donald Trump. Like we, like I said earlier, maybe a lot of I got to slow it down. He got money. That's why he didn't go to war. He paid his way out, and that's a historical thing that rich people have done yeah. in America and even going back to England. He bought his way out. Can I make an announcement? Go right here. Okay. Um, I've been calling in on the station talking about a fundraiser. <clears throat> This is my pet. Okay. I'm also, for the fundraiser, making purses. As you can probably see these are Coleman Young purses. Okay, you'll be able to purchase these at the fundraiser. Sorry. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. The fundraiser is October the 4th from 5 to 9 at Steve's Soul Food on the upper level. We need, tickets are only $20, and you can get them at the campaign headquarters. Um, which is where? Which is on West, on Livernois, south, a half a block of Seven Mile. Is that the 1800 block? Yes, 18963. 18963, okay. 18 Livernois. Come in and volunteer, okay? But please come out. You can get your tickets at the door, okay? Or you $20. can. $20. $20. Only $20. They well, can bring the friends. Mm -hmm. Bring everybody. Bring everybody. Please, right. because. If we let Duggan get back in, they've already got a plan. Well, we know that. Okay, they've already got their plan. Okay, they showed us just a tiny bit, you know, with the bankruptcy. That was just a little bit. Stolen money, stole mm -hmm. our money. No legal authority whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And I, you, know, you know what? We're going to go take some more calls. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me started. Call it. you're on the line. You're on the line. Go right ahead. Hello, sir. How are you? Finding yourself. Thanks for holding. I'm doing wonderful. I'd like to thank the young lady for announcing the fundraiser for Colin Alexander Young for running for mayor. Um, thank it's you. It's a really good time. Um, Pardon? There's going to be ballroom dancing. We're going to have comedians. The tickets are $20. We have plenty of tickets left, and the mayor himself will be there. 
But I wanted to comment on the conversation that you were having about President Trump. What I'm from older school, and I believe that everything that's going on needs to start at home. We need to get out, get involved, get active, and we need to do things to make changes, or they're going to stay the same. These are my opinions, and I hope that the Detroiters get out November 7th and vote for Coleman Alexander Young because That's he right. does have a plan, a vision, and he's heartfelt about what's going on. I drive through the city, and I see that we're almost in a small bay route. We have our own war at home to worry about. We don't need to worry about North Korea, but yes, we do. But we need to start at home with what's going on here, and that's why we're promoting his fundraiser for him to get funding so he can get people to the polls so that they can get out and support a man that has a vision, a young man with some new ideas. Currently, the current mayor is stealing every idea that the senator has put out there. You see grasses being cut, watered, um, housing, money coming in. What did he do for three and a half years? He's had plenty of time to show us what he can do. In the last three months, all of a sudden, everything materializes and he can take care of things. I just want to say I support Coleman Alexander Young, the mayor. He does have a plan. Please purchase a ticket for his fundraiser for $20 so that he can get some funds in his war chest so he can go out and feed the senior citizens a catered catfish meal. Um, excuse me, caller. Day. Did you hear that uh, Duggan threatened the senior citizens over there at Bicentennial? He threatens everybody. He's a very vindictive person, and God don't like vindictive people. I know the senator personally. I've been able to touch and feel him, and he doesn't have a vindictive bone in his body. What he wants to do is he wants the schools to stay open because the kids can be nice and cool in the classroom. He has a lot of things. I can't even go into all the things that he wants to do that Mike Duggan's had three and a half years to at least begin that he hasn't begun. All right. Thanks you guys for that. have a right. wonderful day. Thank you, you caller. Appreciate Thank it. you. Appreciate oh, you're call. welcome. Oh, Bye. Oh, you know what? Since we're talking about Duggan and the current mayor, with the, you know, I, I got a water shut off notice from a person. And they say, look at this. They got a water shut off notice. They put it on the door. Usually they don't put it on the door, even though they claim they do. And only three days to pay. Yesterday was what, Monday? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they got to have a, they're coming out to shut the person's water off Friday. See, we was talking about Friday. that. On the way here. On the way here. And the water department is going to be open at 8.30 Thursday morning. Most people don't get paid on Friday. These people, they lost their mind. And they need to go check the policy on the procedure and the protocol. We were talking about that earlier on the way over here. And according to the Public Service Commissioner uh, rules and regulation, and I think that also applies to the water body, I know it applies to Edison, they are supposed to contact you, contact you at least twice they're supposed to contact you by phone. And if they can't contact you by phone, then they're supposed to bring that notice and put it on your doorknob. Well, they put it on there. Okay, and they're supposed to give you 10 days, not 24 hours. Well, it, well you just, just like three days, it's just like 24 hours, isn't it? Yeah. And, and it's the day before you get paid. On payday while you at work, they're going to cut your water off. And then how you – but let me say this now before I forget. The water department office is open downtown on Saturday. If they yes. cut your water off, go downtown Saturday. Okay. It's open at 9 o'clock Saturday. Yeah. Day one part is open. This is Gary Brown. This is that crook Gary Brown and Snyder and Duggan. Yeah. And they hired and Duggan. Them. I don't know. I don't know why anybody in the church, they're quiet as a church mouth. The preacher ain't said nothing. They said, well, we're not going to get involved in politics. Well, what do you think that is closing your church <laughs> if it ain't politics? They ain't a long sick, same man. Sick, sick, sick. <laughs> Carl, you on the air. Thanks for holding. Oh, uh, let me get in out quickly because I've been on the phone for an uh, hour. But anyway, he who controls the racist media's mouthpiece controls and trains weak minded people to and how to think. There are several incidents that the media will not bring up about this mayor. Uh, there's a vast majority of incidents taken from Detroit 
uh, two daily newspaper. None of these issues has been revisited during this mayor's campaign. We talking about uh, Mackinac Dugan carved out Wayne County deals, airport contract invest invest in Dugan's wife's business, using his tax funded office for political campaign work as DMC. Uh, was sued by the Department of Justice for kickback schemes. Uh, Mike Dugan saved, uh, didn't save the DMC. He sold it and became a millionaire. Uh, Dugan's issues of no bid DPS contracts to vendor who funded his campaign. Uh, more no bid contracts contract this time as one county prosecutor. The list goes on on all the schemes and kickbacks and deals this man has made, and we supposed to believe that he gives a damn about the cities of, of Detroit and its residents. All we see is more looting. Thank you for taking my call. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you. Sylvia. Carly, you're on the air. You got to make it quick with that. I, don't I just want to mention to Sylvia that list you just read out. If it's possible, if you can make a copy to get it to uh, uh, Coleman Young or his uh, uh, representative, Monty, you know, so he can bring that up. All right. All those mm -hmm. issues he can bring up. He can be the media. Okay, well, Didi can get you it know. to him. You can get it. We'll get it for him. Down mm -hmm. on time. Carly, you're the last caller. Can you make it quick? Might go Hello. A thirty minutes. Uh, yes, uh, after, uh, you happy going? morning to everybody. Yeah, we can't go to thirty minutes. Okay, we, okay. Uh, I, I was trying to find out there's something taking place uh, next next week on the fourth. Uh, could DD uh, give out some information about what's going on on the fourth? Okay, thank you. All right, hold okay. it a minute, hold it a minute, just hold on, and uh, what do you say, Kyle, we're going yeah. to another half an hour, we've just been notified that we're going to 1030. 1030. So, uh, <laughs> stay on the line, okay, go ahead, now, would that mean we're going to 1030, we're going to take a break at 10 o'clock, we're going to take a break at 10 o'clock, and everybody there, you can go get your coffee hot, and come on mm -hmm. back, and we're going to rock and roll, go ahead, finish, caller. Uh, that that's uh that's one uh did you to give information what's going on on the fourth next week. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a, a, a rocking good time. A mm -hmm. fundraiser for Coleman Alexander Young the second at Steve's Soul, Soul food, food on the upper level. Looking for about maybe seven or eight hundred people to be out. They're going to have ballroom dancing contests. Hustle. Hustle? Yes, I can't ballroom dance because I always try to be the lead, and the man has to lead, and that just. <laughs> uh, anyways, and they're going to have uh, um, comedians. So we're going to have a really, just let your hair down and party. And tickets are only $20. Yeah, that's not bad. Okay, and on the 12th, when we come back from break, I'd like to talk about parents, single parents for Coleman Young's event at Burt's on the 12th. Well, all right. right. <clears throat> single parents for Man, Coleman Young. But, you know, folks, you got to vote. You got to get your people registered to vote. You still have time to register the folks to get out to vote. We'll be yeah. registering at Steve's Soul Food on the 4th. Good. Is that too late? No. No. No, it's the 7th. What's the I, was told, I was told it was the 7th. 7th of October. Mm -hmm. Well, they need a They're gonna have absentee need to ballots the ground. There. Okay, we're going to a break, break, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to a break. We're coming right back. Don't go anywhere.